biting and chewing insect pests. As their name suggests, biting and chewing insect pests attack crops and other plants by biting and feeding on plant blossoms, fruit, leaves, and young stems. The caterpillars in the image below have bitten this oak leaf almost entirely to its veins, known as skeletonizing. Why do you think biting and chewing might lead to plant destruction, failure to thrive, or death? Possible reasons why biting and chewing insects can cause crop damage and or death include premature fruit fall, stunted or distorted growth due to injury to the stems, buds, and or fruit, reduction in seed production and consumable or marketable crops, exposure due to the removal of protective biological elements such as rinds and bark, Limited ingestion of plant nutrients and water due to root, tuber, leaf, and or stem damage. Biting and chewing insects may be insect larvae, caterpillars, or full-grown adults. The grasshopper mouth illustration below identifies the mouth parts which enable feeding by biting and chewing. The two key mouth parts that enable biting and chewing insects to cause plant damage are the maxilla, plural maxillae, and mandible. The maxilla is the upper jaw. The mandible is the lower jaw. Together, these parts are called mandibles. They allow biting and chewing insects to bite and crush plant parts. Grasshopper. Zonoceros variegatus and Zonoceros elegans. The grasshopper is a leaf-eating insect that can decimate the foliage of crops, especially in the dry season. Unlike its mostly brown relatives, common West African grasshopper species tend to be brightly colored greens or yellows with black, white, and or red accents and green wings. The grasshopper is a polyphagous insect, able to eat various foods. Grasshoppers eat the leaves or stems of its food, most often in the seedling stage. This results in defoliation of the leaves or debarking of stems, causing direct or indirect damage to a crop. Unfortunately, almost any crop may serve as food for the grasshopper. Tropical climate crops commonly impacted include cassava, soybean, groundnut, coffee, citrus, legumes, most vegetables, cereal grains such as maize, sorghum, and wheat. The grasshopper also transmits the mosaic viruses of okra and cowpea. Grasshopper infestations begin with eggs laid over the winter months in the soil of weeds or tall grasses in the field or its perimeter. Favorable conditions for grasshoppers are warm, moist springs. Grasshoppers can be prevented or controlled by hand-picking insects, weeding, cutting down tall grasses, spraying insecticides, tilling fields in the spring and fall to expose eggs. Locust, Schista circa gregaria. The locust is a short-horned subspecies of grasshopper. There are two stages to a locust's life cycle, solitary and gregarious. During periods of drought followed by rapid growth of vegetation, the locust's brain produces serotonin, prompting it to group with other nymphs, wingless juvenile locusts, such as those in the image below. In the solitary stage, the locust feeds with almost identical frequency and habits as the grasshopper. In the gregarious phase, however, locusts gather together and swarm. This leads to the de decimation of all vegetation in the swarm's path. When swarming, locusts take on a darker, almost monotone coloring. A locust will molt its exoskeleton multiple times during its life cycle. All plant species in its path may fall prey to a swarm of locusts. Among those most at risk are cereal crops, legumes, and pastures and other grassy fields. Swarming locusts, such as those in the photo below, 
migrate in the direction of the prevailing wind. Crop damage by locusts can be prevented, treated, or controlled by using pesticides and biopesticides, targeting locust nymphs, destroying breeding centers during the solitary phase. Cricket, including species of Gryllus and Grillotalpa africana. A larger relative of grasshoppers, crickets are omnivores and eat both plants and animals. West African crickets are usually darker yellows, browns, or black. Cricket antennae are much longer than those of grasshoppers or locusts. Some species have antennae that are at least as long as their body. Crickets feast on plants, insects, and insect larvae, including slugs and snails, the remains of insects and small animals such as birds, and even synthetic material. Their preferred diet includes plant seeds, leaves, roots, stems, and tubers. Crickets most often lay eggs in plant stems. Cricket damage can be prevented or controlled by hand-picking insects, weeding, cutting down tall grasses, spraying insecticides, mowing and tilling fields in the spring and fall to destroy eggs. Tropical climate crops damaged by crickets include tobacco, lettuce, and other leafy crops, cassava, potato, carrot, and other root crops, tomatoes and other fruits and vegetables, soybeans, grains such as maize, sorghum, rice, rice, wheat, and alfalfa. Termite, Macrotermes natalensis. Termites are eusocial insects that spend the majority of their life cycle underground. Eusocial insects live in colonies. There are more than 1,000 species of termites in Africa. Termites feed on wood, cellulose, and other decomposing organic matter. Termites kill plants from the vegetation's roots. After removing the nutritious root material, the termite fills the holes with soil and destabilizes the plants. This process can cause even mature trees to topple. Some termites eat the bark of trees as well. Crops most often impacted by termites include rice, wheat, maize, sorghum, millet, groundnut, sugarcane, cotton, and most trees. Termite infestation can be identified by hollow plant roots and stems. Termites and termite tunnels in the soil surrounding the roots are often visible. Termites are spread by expansion of its colony. The colony begins underground but moves above ground, shown in the photo below, during the insect's winged phase. Termite damage can be prevented or controlled using pesticides, insecticides, and biopesticides. Termite colony or mound removal, often completed by hand, proper irrigation and soil nutrition, crop rotation, and timely harvesting and removal of dead plant material. Butterflies and moths, order Lepidoptera. There are more than 1,000 butterfly and moth species in Nigeria alone. As we'll soon see, the larvae, caterpillars of butterflies and moths, pose the biggest threats to crops. Some caterpillars serve as predators to smaller insect pests, but many cause significant damage that overrides their benefits. Butterflies are active during the day, diurnal, while moths are nocturnal, active at night. Usually, butterfly wings are colorful and those of moths are dull. However, the colors of butterflies and moths are diverse. They may be monotone or brightly and differently colored. As adults, both butterflies and moths are generally beneficial to crops as they pollinate plants as they siphon, a method of feeding that does not involve piercing. The presence of butterflies and moths is a good indication of environmental health. Leafworm, Spadoptera literalis. The African or Egyptian cotton leafworm is a species of moth native to Africa. As a moth, the cotton leafworm is colored in neutral browns, blacks, and reds. However, its larva stage, known as a caterpillar, is bright green. The leafworm gets its name from its caterpillar stage and feeding preference of leaves. 
Leafworm eggs are laid on the underside of the leaves. When hatched, the larvae eat large amounts as they move to the soil to develop into the pupae and later moths. As a caterpillar larva, the leaf worm primarily eats leaves, but can also eat stems, buds, fruits, cotton balls, and flowers. Copious loss of foliage, often skeletonized, indicates infection. Damage by the leaf worm can be prevented, treated, or controlled by introduction of predators such as some bird species, aerial pesticide application, hand removal of the eggs and larvae. Some leaf worms have adapted to become resistant to pesticides, making management more difficult. The cotton leaf worm, also known as the tobacco cutworm, is polyphagous and can cause direct and indirect damage to more than 80 species of economic importance. Tropical crops most impacted by the leaf worm include okra, onions and leeks, tobacco, cotton, groundnuts, banana and citrus trees, lettuces, root vegetables like cassava, maize, tomato, and other fruits and vegetables, soybeans, cereal grains such as rice, wheat, and sorghum, coffee, and cocoa plants. Armyworm Spodoptera exempta and Spodoptera frugiperta. The African armyworm is a moth species endemic to Africa. In 2016, the fall armyworm, an invasive American species, was discovered in Nigeria before spreading to dozens of African countries. Both species can be exceptionally damaging to crops. Like the locust, the armyworm has a solitary and gregarious phase. Armyworm larvae are initially gregarious, but become solitary as they mature. Gregarious armyworms migrate in large groups, eating the vegetation in its path. The armyworm attacks more than 300 species of crops worldwide. Each plant in the armyworm's path is entirely devoured, leaves, stems, and all. The photo below shows damage and droppings left on a maize plant by the fall armyworm. Tropical crops most impacted by the armyworm include cereal crops like corn, rice, wheat, millet, and sorghum, ginger, and sugarcane. Armyworms reproduce at an exponential rate. A female can lay 1,000 eggs over its 10-day lifespan. Not all of these eggs survive, but their numbers grow rapidly. The close-up photo below shows eggs on a maize leaf after being laid, known as ovipositioning, on the left, and then after three days on the right. Armyworm infections are also spread through migration. Armyworm infestations can be prevented, controlled, or treated by biological or chemical insecticide application, planting of long grasses near fields, planting resistant crops, and intercropping. Intercropping, also known as trap cropping or push-pull pest management, requires the planting of an attractive alternative to draw the armyworm away from the crop intended for consumption or sale. The most common West African intercropping to prevent armyworm damage is the growing of legumes or cassava in the same field or the perimeter of a maize crop. The photo at the right shows Desmodium, a legume planted in a Kenyan maize field.